Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? I'm Alex Bennett and this, yes, it's me and this is The Ramble. And we go on from now until uh, midnight uh, Eastern Time and if you're anywhere else in the world, well, that's too bad. Well, uh, you can, you know, if you're in China, it's, uh, what time is it in China right now? It's 10 minutes, it's uh, 6 minutes past 10 o'clock in China in the morning. Okay, so I know that much. So if you're listening to us now in China at that time, we're live. Otherwise, this is a recording, and you can hear our recordings 24-7 uh, during the day. I don't know why I run the network 24-7. There's, the only reason I, because I don't find that we have many listeners. Here's the reason why, and there's a good reason why. Because you can get this program and any of our programs uh, uh, online uh, rather than listening to the 24 uh, 7, you can go over to our on demand. And at the on demand part of our uh, gabnet.net, that's the site you go to, over on the left hand side of the page, you've got all the programs we did during the last 24 hours and perhaps for like almost the last couple of weeks. So uh, uh, people can go there and listen to the show they want. They don't have to sit there listening to a 24 7 feed that's kind of recycling all the stuff. Uh, and uh, you can also get this video at gabnet.net. And let's see what else uh, you, you can get. Anything you uh, all these shows are available to you. You can go to you can go to uh, iTunes, and all these shows are on iTunes. Um, so there are ways that you can listen to these programs and not have to uh, go through the uh, the problem of uh, of of having to. Uh, uh, just, you know, listen through a show maybe you didn't want to hear, although I think all our shows are good, to get to a show you do want to hear because we're running a 24-7 feed. But you might check out the 24-7 feed as you're driving down the highway or whatever because it just, you know, the program just goes on like that. But then again, you can go to the Internet and probably get the show and listen to it anyway. You know what I'm saying. So I don't know why I keep it going 24-7, but the only reason I do is there are a couple of people usually listening to it. And uh, the other reason is is because we do these live programs, and when we finally do the live programs, it would be a lot more difficult getting an audience, I think, if we had nothing but dead air all day, and then all of a sudden at 10 o'clock, here I am, or at 9.30, there's Damien. Or, and sorry, Damien, by the way. Damien... Wasn't on tonight, but he was on for about a minute and a half, I think. And then I heard nothing but silence, and he had trouble with his computer last night. And then he had a, trouble with his computer tonight, so I ran last night's show that he did where he said he was having computer problems. But anyway, he had computer problems tonight, and I hope it's not uh, anything too permanent or too expensive, Damien. But then again, I think he built the computer himself, so he, he's got to know how to fix it. So... Hopefully everything will be fine. He'll be on tomorrow night because, you know, I love Damien's show, and I think it's a great lead into this one. Uh, <coughs> what was that? I better take some coffee to just, you know. By the way, I got to tell you, this, uh, this uh, um, YouTube has worked out marvelously. I mean, right now we have more people listening uh, right at this moment at the beginning of the show than we usually have in the past uh, way into the show or ever, you know, so the, the, it, thank you. I really appreciate it. I notice more and more people are not listening to the live feed, though, which is also going out as we talk, uh, because you can go over to gabnet.net and you can click on uh, the TuneIn app or you can click on the thing below it and it'll let you just listen to the audio-only version of the show. But why listen to the audio-only version of the show if you can... Look at my mug, okay? Anyway, so anyway, thank you so much. I really, But I really think the YouTube thing has worked out just phenomenally, and the video looks gorgeous, you know. It almost makes me look okay, something like that. 
So anyway, I don't have a guest tonight, and uh, when I don't do that, I then just sit here and start talking, and I don't know if I have anything interesting to say tonight. Um, uh, I have a couple of little fun things. I mean, let's see, in the last couple of days, what did I do? Oh, we put together furniture. That was fun. We, it was, it was, here's what happened. Girlfriend, God bless her. I, I love her so much. She went out and bought us two side tables. They're about 300 bucks a piece. They had been 600 and she kept waiting for the price to drop. And when she saw the price drop, she ordered it. And the, uh, the, the, uh, they came in two giant boxes. Now, I thought we were going to have to put the whole thing together because it said assembly required, okay? And she said, no, it's probably just the feet. And I said, no, it's assembly. Uh, it says assembly required, so that must mean it's like Ikea. You got to put the goddamn thing together, right? And I've gotten that kind of furniture before, and I, it seemed to me logical that if they were shipping this uh, FedEx, which it was, um, that they would be shipping it flat, okay? So all the pieces would be flat in the box. Well, the two boxes get here, and they're the size of a, or a little bit larger than the size of a, uh, a side table for your bedroom. So uh, I open up the boxes, and I pull them out, and uh, sure enough, there are two, four little feet that you have to, like, screw onto the bottom of the thing bottom of the uh, unit well she also paid another hundred and sixty dollars for somebody to come over and put it together right uh and the fact was that um you didn't need some if a hundred i 160 bucks to do this i did all eight of them eight of the feet little feet in about what total 10 15 minutes maybe not even that because they just screwed them in you could do them mostly by hand and then you just tighten them up with a little lug wrench they give you and it was very simple so she called him and said forget it don't come over and do this but 160 bucks so i felt good because i saved her 160 dollars the only thing was she made a bet with me that the box would come with the things completely made and all you would have to do was add on the feet. And I said, she wanted to bet $10. I said, I'll make it 20. No way they're sending these things without sending them flat. So I owed her 20 bucks. I saved her 160. So in total, I probably gave her $170 or something like that, $180 because my $20 plus the... Anyway, I didn't charge her anything for putting it together. I just can't see why anybody would charge that much money to do that. And I can't see why, once you know that all it takes is putting the feet on there, you would even pay somebody to do that. But she wanted to be on the safe side, and, you know, she's very good that way. She likes to make sure she does all the, all the coverage and things like that. You know, covers her ass. That was, that, was, that was the exciting thing that we did. And after it was all through, we were exhausted, and then I had to do a show, and she could go to sleep. Let's see, the other exciting thing in my life, see, I mean, I don't have exciting things in my life anymore. I used to have exciting things all the time. I was going somewhere, or there was something happening, or there was some important person I was going to meet, you know. Now it's just, you know, I, I, I'm... I'm a retiree who sits at home all day and piddles with this little network trying to make it make some noise. Uh, and um, so I don't have the exciting life that I used to have. So little things become exciting. So what I did was I ordered uh, from Amazon. I have a, an Echo, okay? Uh, and by the way, if you have an Echo, you know, you can listen to this program. You can listen to the 24-7 feed I was talking about earlier just by saying into it, Alexa, um, tune in Great American Broadcast. That's all you have to say. If you can't remember that, it's also at gabnet.net. I've actually got it up there so that you know what to tell uh, Alexa. And then every time you go tune in, it will say uh, playing last program. 
So you don't even have to say Great American Broadcast. But anyway, uh, so I've had that for a while, and I really love it. I mean, the thing is, when you think that uh, it was one of those things I bought that I felt I was never going to need, you know, that I was going to have buyer's remorse. But they had the price down. It was like down to 69 bucks, And I said, eh, what the fuck? I'll, I'll buy the goddamn thing. So I buy it, and girlfriend's kind of circumspect about what's that piece of crap you bought. And I'm sitting, I'm doing it in the guest room, and playing with it, and I'm talking to him. And I call her in. And I say, "Listen, I can ask it something, and it t gives me an answer." And she goes, oh, "Yeah, right, yeah." Well, now she can't live without the echo either, okay? And she can't live without it because now she learned that we have we put it in the kitchen, and when I'm cooking, I go. I say echo, and I'll tell you why in a moment, but I go, echo, um, uh, set timer for five minutes or set it for three hours and 70 minutes or whatever, 60 minutes. It, anyway, I can use it when I'm cooking, but we also then, it's dinner time, and she says uh, she wants to hear uh, Neil Diamond. She says, play Neil Diamond, and it starts playing all the Neil Diamond music because I pay $4 a month for the music service. Uh, and she's really gotten to like it. I mean, I, I, you'll never get her to admit it, but it, it's... It, oh, and the best thing, she always used to write down on a little piece of paper all these little things we need. Get Trident gum, uh, get cashews, we need cashews, get this, that, for when I went to Costco. And then she'd always say to me, don't forget to take the uh, list. Well, now all you say is cost, uh, 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 Alexa, or in my case, Echo, Echo, add cashews to the shopping list. And immediately it adds cashews to the shopping list. And then I have my, I could show it to you here. I have my, uh, let me pull, pull this apart here. I'm just charging my phone. Uh, I go to the Alexa app, okay. Wait a minute, go to the Alexa app, and it has an Amazon Alexa. There we are, you see. That's the, and then I go to uh, lists. And then I go to shopping, okay? So, uh, I and look look what's there, if you can see it. Can you see it? Is it, there we go, see? Cashews, okay. It, it, it kind of made the light go dim, didn't it? But anyway, see, it puts it on the, so she says all the things she wants, and I say all the things I need, and then when I go down there, I don't even have to ask her what, what, what I need. I go to my Alexa app, and uh, I, uh, I click on it, and I, I see all the things I got to buy. She loves that. So, you know, all of a sudden, this thing has become important in our lives. And I think it's a good little item. I think they really did something when they created this thing. Uh, and um, so what I did is I said, well, I like that so much. I, I, I'm tired of this big clunky alarm clock clock radio that i've got it has a ipod in it and all of that i'm, I'm tired of that i so i got that for a hundred and it was on sale for 114 dollars the thing they call the uh echo spot and what the echo spot is is it's a little it's kind of like a little sphere with a flat bottom so it'll sit on the table and it's got a screen on it and it does all the things that uh, the echo does but also, if I say, uh, uh, show me Reuters news, it shows me the video of Reuters news brief for the day. So, uh, you know, and it wakes me up, and I look over at it, and it's got a clock, the clock going around, and occasionally it'll flash the temperature. It's terrific, and I've just learned how to use it. And I finally got uh, the girlfriend onto the, onto the account so she can use it just like I do, and it really, it, 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 I got to tell you, folks, it, it really is uh, a wonderful, a wonderful thing. Okay, so that's, that's that. And I'm thrilled by it, okay? And, of course, she's now with this one, she's going, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, it does that. And I said, watch this. I said, every morning, you want to know what the temperature is going to be in the morning. All I have to say is I went, I went, Echo. Uh, what's the temperature going to be tomorrow morning at 5 a.m.? And she said, at 5 a.m., the temperature will be 28 degrees. I said, see? And she kind of went. She, she had to admit that wasn't bad, okay, that that was pretty goddamn good. 
Anyway, if I want all the music though in the bedroom, I've got to uh, I've got to pay another four bucks a month because you only get that on one machine. You get it on all your machines across all your platforms for eight bucks a month. So anyway, that's uh, that's you see you see what the little cheap stupid things thrill me now. I would think that this intelligent discussion that I'm having here would have gotten us more listeners, but unfortunately. Uh, we've lost a couple. Anyway, I have a little number here that tells me how many people are listening. It's not fantastic, okay? Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. I want to talk to you about something. Uh, I am, I guess I'm one of these kind of guys, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, glasses half empty guys. Uh, I never look at the really positive picture. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to give you approximate numbers. I'm not, it's, it has nothing to do with how much money I have or don't have. I'm just trying to give you an example of this. So I wrote my business manager a note today. And I said to him, at what point do we jump out the window? Now, what I was referring to was, of course, the massive dip the stock market took yet again today. Between the bad one last week and the bad one today, there has been a loss there of over 2,000 points. And then you add to that all the other lackluster days, and the stock market, I think, has lost over 3,000 points. That's a big dip. And if you go and look at your 401k and what it's worth today, uh, I think you will find that it isn't worth shit. Uh, you know, it, it has gone down precipitously. Now, I got to tell you, in one of my accounts, okay, let me give you an example. In one of my accounts, I was counting the money and seeing it just go up in this one thing that I'm, I'm kind of invested in this. Uh, um, in, in this particular case, it was Vanguard, okay? And I saw my money just really jumping over the year. Uh, in, in just this one account, because I have other accounts too, I had gained $14,000 in a year. $14,000. Well, all of a sudden, this thing happens, and it's starting to go into the toilet. So I run, write my business manager, and I said, hey, um, at what point do we jump out the window? And he wrote me back and he said, if I had told you a year ago when your account was worth X number of dollars that today, not last week when it was higher, but today, a year later, it would be worth this much, he said, you'd think that was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and I said, you know, you really make, I wrote him back and said, you make a lot of sense, but I still hate Trump. Uh, you make a lot of sense. I mean, yes, I could say, boy, last week I had uh, $200,000, let's say, and now I only have, uh, uh, you know, $192,000. But last year at the same time, I had 170,000. These are not actual figures, folks, because I don't want, don't want you to know how poor I really am. Uh, the fact is that I'm better off right now than I was a year ago. I'm better off by uh, 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 a good deal of money, okay? So I can't feel that bad about it. And if we sit here uh, it'll rise. It'll go up. It may not go up to where it was, but it's going to, it will go up. But what bothers me, and, and by the way, people, if you have a 401k or you have invested and uh, you think that uh, you got to pull out because this thing's just going to hell, well, we're all going to go to hell if it, it goes down to nothing, okay? We're all going to be in trouble, so don't worry about that. But I think my best suggestion, and I've never been, I would never wind up working on CNBC, okay? I'm not, I don't, I, I, it took me years before I knew what just, you know, a point was that it's actually a dollar. Uh, and, and for me to realize that the Dow Jones averages are the averages of, what was it, uh, 30 different companies? That's about it. 
Yeah. Yeah. 30 companies. Uh, and uh, but th that, you know, you just don't um, that you just sit there. And I'm going to tell you, you don't sell. Just hold on to it, you know, because you're better off now than if, if you had had if that money was sitting there a year ago, you're better off now than you were a year ago by a great deal. And yet you're not worth as much as you were last week. I'm worth about what I estimate, something like four thousand dollars less than I was last week. And uh, you're uh, and that's in one account uh, in another account. uh uh, you know, about the same percentage. So, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't do anything. Just let it sit there. And, and if it gets worse, it gets worse. But if it gets worse, there's also the upside that eventually it will get better. But people said to me, you know, have, have asked me why I feel that the stock market took a dip. Part of it had to do with... Uh, Trump getting rid of Janet Yellen. Uh, she was the head of the Fed. Uh, and um, she had a desire not to raise interest rates. But the new guy that replaced her, um, who I saw an interview with her, she said is a, is a good guy, uh, may raise the interest rates. That's one thing that has made things a little skittish. It's also that, you know, and you would think with all the great numbers we have and things like that, that uh, the people who invest would just think it was, it was all just fine. And the fact is that it's, it's not, okay? Uh, that uh, that they, there is a skittishness out there. There is a fear. What happens when people sell off like this is fear. <clears throat> fear drives the market more than anything else. And I think they do not feel safe with Donald Trump. I think they don't feel safe with the way the money is going. Uh, I mean, for instance, uh, we give all these tax breaks. That's going to add a trillion dollars to the national debt. This from a guy who said the national debt is too high. Now the national debt is going to go up by another trillion. All right. That doesn't make for confidence. So what we saw was a lack of confidence. We, and this was a real blowout. Last week, the drop we took was the largest drop, one-day drop in the history of the New York Stock Exchange. Okay? Today's was the second biggest drop because it was just a little bit less than the one last week. I mean, we have, uh, you remember that whole thing with, with the Silicon Valley when it completely fell apart and fell into the, uh, into the abyss? Wasn't as bad precipitously as this is. And what I love about these people out there is they try and put a silver lining on all of this and they say, oh, well, this is just a correction. I got to tell you, 3,000 points over two weeks is not just a bloody correction, folks. It's a disaster, okay? Uh, and, for the, you know, I, I didn't think there'd be another day like the other day. I didn't think it would go down another 1,000 points. In fact, today I tuned in to one of the networks, and they said, oh, we're down 400, and I went, oh, boy, here we go again. But I didn't think we were going to have another one of these over 1,000 days, here we were. We had it. And let me see here. I have my uh, my little uh, uh, stock market thing here that I go to every now and then. And uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, we were down 1,032.89 points, or I like to say dollars. That's the way I am. NASDAQ was down 274.82 uh and uh let's see here uh the uh stock exchange is now it's at 23,860 and of course our president was lauding the fact that we had gone over 26,000 well we are now almost below 23,000 so it's 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 not good uh and it hasn't it isn't wonderful and uh I don't know what we're gonna what we're gonna do, but just just hang in there, you know. 
And if we're all going to starve, we'll starve together, you know. And I'll see you at the soup line. And, uh, you know, I will work for food, okay? I will work for food. I will do a radio show for food. Anyway, let me, uh, let me, uh, it's time for us to go to our citizens panel. Let me see. First, I got to get it all in place here so that it looks really good and turn it on. There we go. Now we're online. And then we just sit here and wait for people to call us. And, uh, you know, so how much money have you lost, everybody? Uh, you know, if you have a 401k, you've lost, okay? But you gained a lot. If you, you were probably sitting there looking at your 401k and going, oh, man, that's good. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm making a fortune here. And now you're, of course, going to go, you know, you know. I guess I'm not making a fortune here. Anyway, uh, our, uh, if you want to get a hold of us, uh, we use a thing called Skype. If you want to find out how to use it, go over to gabnet.net. You won't miss the program because the video is playing over there, too, at gabnet.net. And uh, uh, over on the right-hand side tells you how to get Skype, how to call the show. It even has a button you can press that will dial it up, okay? So you don't even have to do that. It's really simple. It's really easy. And... Um, uh, that, that's how you do it. And our Skype ID, if you already have Skype and you know how to use it, is Gabnet Live. G A B N E T L I V E. Now, if you are going to call for the first time, best thing to do is to go up and go to where it says call. And then uh, when you go to where it says call, it says, uh, um, excuse me, go up to contacts. And then it says add contact. And then you say, add this contact, add GabNet Live. And that will immediately send me a little note saying, hey, uh, I, want to, I want you to recognize me as a contact, and I will recognize you in a contact. I can get you on the air here without you doing that. It's just a little more trouble for me and uh, not as cosmetically beautiful for the program. But anyway... Uh, we're waiting now, and I'm, as I do every night, I do my little fast tap dance here to try and uh, 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 come up with a, uh, things to say while I'm waiting for the first caller to call the program. And I see who it's going to be. Yes, uh-huh. Yes, and, and there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Whoops. Wait a minute, that's, that's the wrong button for me to push. There's the button for me to push. Scott Boddicker, ladies and gentlemen, from Plano, Texas. Not plain old Texas, but Plano. Plano, Texas. Yeah, yeah. How are you this evening, my friend? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just going to tell you, Alex, you don't lose money, you don't gain. Well, you, well I, I gained that money. I mean, if I wanted to a week ago, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, cash in my money i would have four thousand dollars more than i have now but but you didn't cash it in so you didn't have it R right well it, you, <laughs> yeah i guess well, the, well that's about about what my business manager was saying hey if i told you a year ago when you had so much in there that you would have so much at this time this year you would have gone whoop de doo that's terrific you know so he said that's how you that's how you look at the stock market you don't look at it as Hey, I had this wonderful gain, right? You know. So. It's it's just legalized gambling. That's all it is. If you're sitting at a blackjack table and you're rolling that money, yeah. Oh, it's it's you you get up, you go down. Yeah. Yep. You go up, down. Yeah. It's only good when you. Can. You can't. You kind of. You're kind of like your voice is freezing on us a little bit. Is it? Yeah. Uh, are you? Is your? Are you using Wi-Fi in your house? Now he's frozen. Yeah, but ever since the power, see, boy. Every time my Wi-Fi comes on, I'll tell you. Try just try calling us. I gotta go to the five G. Go to the five G. That'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah, five G will work every time. Five G is rich and wonderful. Hello, Phil. Hey, how you doing? How are you? Uh, I had my, uh, you know, this new photography club. Yeah. You yeah. submit a photo, and this was my first time submitting a photo. Yeah, to your phone. To your phone. Number one. And so, uh, this club is a member of something called an NC4. There's 14 of these clubs in California. 
So then it goes to their uh, judging. Mm -hmm. Since I won in the in in the club wide, mm -hmm. so it goes to the judging, and uh, uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Then I'm up against fourteen other clubs. It, yeah, and then what happens? Uh, my picture gets a uh, a rating. It get, gets a rating. Yeah, I see. And and then. Is there any? Then, is there any money? Hey, now you look fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. Five. Testing. Five. Testing. Can you hear me? Oh, five G is the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, how, how do you get your computer to come up to always go to the five G instead of the 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 regular G? I don't you know. Look. Sometimes uh, yeah. you gotta look. You yeah. Know, I uh, I don't know. What do you have? A PC or a Mac? A Mac. Okay. Well, Just you go up. You go up to the top where you have your Wi Fi. That yeah. little fan with the radiated things, and you click on it, and it lowers down different things like you know the five G, the regular sure. thing, and whatever. And you just neighbor. you just click on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, well, when it, when I turn it on, it always seems to default now back to the to the, yeah. the regular. Well, you can always you, know, you just just go up there and just turn it where you just want it. Double check. Just right. Double check right. where you want it. That's the signal. Yeah. Uh, to your computer uh, is stronger on the non 5G, except that the 5G is stronger. Well, out, okay, out. okay, okay. Between the photography talk and the and and this, uh, we just lost five people. Well, <laughs> you lost five well, people. Your audience is aging. No, they're aging <laughs> listening to this discussion. <laughs> Well, anyway, when they uh, first started yeah, so listening to this program, they were 14, and now they're 78. What? Uh, well, they're. Uh, and I so won. you won. Well, congratulations. Yeah. What was it? A picture? It was some porn uh, or whatever. No, it was a uh, musician uh, named Marvin Seals. He was an organist, and uh, I told I you it was it. porn, folks. I told you it was porn. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he he uh, uh, he had played with the Grateful Dead and a number of other people. He wasn't a member of them, but mm -hmm. had played. Well, anyway, uh, I got this shot and um, from the pit at the UC Theater, and the uh, the thing was color, so there was a lot of color. And uh, oh boy, here glasses, we are. I'm getting bored. I'm getting drowsy now. Okay, his glasses reflected. See, uh, the see what you could be hands. doing now is that instead of telling us about the picture. You could show it to us. I don't have it. They take it because I won, and I won't get it back until it goes through the NC, N4C judging. So, in other words, you could have. You don't have a second copy of this picture. Well, I do. Uh, 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 it was. Uh, it was a really good picture, and Yoni <laughs> Mayeri saw it. And I made one for her, and it. And she said, "This is wall worthy." So they put it up on the wall at the UC Theater. Uh, you know, they, they have a room just like it, uh, uh, not Winterland. All uh, I'm saying is but, this has absolutely no weight if we can't see the picture. Well, um, I've got one cropped a different way on my Facebook page. Uh, so uh, You mean I have to go over to your fucking Facebook page? Well, I'll show you on the phone. <laughs> I, won't be, I, won't, I won't be that tough on you. By the way, I'm thinking, uh, I was talking to a girlfriend tonight. We were both thinking about dropping Facebook. We just yeah, so we, did uh, that comedian. What's his name? Uh, 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 the uh, the one that did Dumb and Dumber and uh, uh, oh, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. He, he's quitting Facebook. He's not only quitting it; he sold his stock. And the reason he says he's quitting it is because Facebook it was compliant in allowing the uh, Russians to. Uh, well, that's one of the things that bothers me. You know, and the fact that they take no real responsibility for it, you know, uh -huh. uh, uh, but I don't know. I just don't like uh, the latest thing they've done. And I didn't know they did this because I really don't read my news feed. But if you have a news feed, it used to be everybody you knew or who was a friend of yours would wind up in the news feed if they posted <laughs> something. And now they've limited it to 12 of the people who are your friends that they will put in the news feed. Oh, that's the photo. Yeah, but if you look at his glasses, mm -hmm. they reflect the... It's hard to see on my phone, uh, but Wait. they reflect the organ and yeah. his hands. Oh, very... So very, very. Uh, it, it's actually... And anyway, yeah, the, the judge looked at it and said, this is a great photo. I mean, it was the first photo they looked at, too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. What, 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 were the others, what were the others? Kitty cats? 
Uh, some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, no, but what was I? What was I saying? Uh, oh, about Facebook. Facebook. And I just, I don't know. I just, I, I, after my experience of doing Facebook Live and suddenly realizing that, in spite of the fact that I don't, I'm not in love with Google necessarily. I find that YouTube is so, uh, technically so much better. Uh, I just don't know why I'm, oh, and they keep getting the keep getting more, uh, you know, like cutting you down to twelve people and things like that. They're starting to do more and more stuff like that. That they're taking the soul out of Facebook, which was kind of a dodge city for people communicating with each other. You, you notice know. that if you read something on Facebook, you get bombarded with ads, and 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 you could start reading an article, and five seconds into the article, they they make you watch uh, a, a an ad before you can finish reading the article. I don't find and, that. that. That's not, that, wait a minute, That's not the problem with Facebook. That's, that's a problem. what's happening to me on my mobile feed. And then well, the wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Is this while you're on Facebook or when you go use Facebook and you click on a link and you go somewhere else? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I click on a link that's there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, and then I, you're, I but then you're, go, then you're going somewhere else. That's not Facebook who's doing that. Uh, okay. And, well, it's, it's a Facebook ad. What do you mean? It's a Facebook ad. Well, it's, it's it's a Facebook. It's an article. It's on Facebook. Wait a and, minute, I uh, don't know of articles on Facebook. I know people p put articles on Facebook, okay. and then if you double click on that, it will probably take you like if you double click on my YouTube picture, for instance, on my page, it, and you double click it, it will take you to a YouTube page. It right. Won't, so it, these it, ads are onerous, and uh, they're uh, no, no. But that uh, has nothing to that has nothing to do with Facebook. Well, they, they let these things on. I mean, it wasn't that way a year ago. A year well, ago, I mean, you wanted uh, to read something, you read it. No, no, no. That is the nature of the internet now. It's just well, that you know. They've, it, oh yeah, it gets to the point where uh, like I used to uh, like uh, want to go over and you know read an article, see an article, and, and relate it to the people I was talking to. But I found if I left my audio up, somehow there would be a video or something before it started. You know, that's true too. And uh, YouTube, uh, I can choose to have them monetize my videos or not monetize my videos. I do get that choice. Um, but it, but all I'm saying is, you, is that, you need what, more followers before you get any money. Uh, I, I'm on not. YouTube. I am, I know that you don't have to huh? tell me that. And I'm never going to have those kind of numbers, so I'm not even thinking about it. What I'm saying is monetizing it by the fact that they run commercials before a video. Now, the right. only time they will do that is if you uh, have some copyrighted material in it. So that goes to pay off the people whose copyright you're using. Okay. But otherwise, I mean, nobody got a commercial before they came on here, I don't think. Uh, no. You know. No, not yours. Yeah. So, uh, but I, you know, no, I just, I, I, I just question whether, you know, the, the, the wonderfulness that was Facebook really exists any longer. You know, it's, it's just, and then the Facebook Live, it gave, it put a bad taste in my mouth. You know, it, it wasn't inundated with as many ads as it is now. Uh, the ads used to be off to the side when you looked at it on a desktop. Now I don't they're... have I don't have any I'm telling you now in my fa my fa when I go over to my Facebook to a Facebook my Facebook page you look at it on your phone over to the uh, right hand nine, side nine, the right hand hundred. side of my Facebook page there is yeah. nothing really yes there maybe is they nothing. know that uh, you're a cheap screw and you're not going to buy anything that's, anyway that's, so they don't waste that's, the end that's, that's correct you're absolutely right you got it you got it you got it you got it right you know hey they got you figured out. Well, anyway, Jim Carrey, yeah. he's got them figured out. And if he sold his Facebook stock before yeah. this last thousand point correction, he may have saved himself some money. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the stock is and, and whether it went down today. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me see. We're going to Ray Renati is calling. Hello. Hello. Hello, Ray. You there? You there, Ray? I'm here. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. How much? How are you doing? How much money did you lose today? I haven't looked. You're probably afraid to, right? 
Yeah, I figure, what the hell, I got enough to be depressed about. Yeah. I don't need to add another thing. But, I again, my business manager put it best. He said, if a year ago I told you today you would have that much money, you would have gone, wow, that's terrific. Yeah, I heard so, you say you that. Know, in the car, I heard you say that. You know, it's true. It, 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 yeah. it, it, it is a way of looking at it. And uh, uh, I, I guess he's trying to make me feel better. You know. Hey, Ray. Yeah, I, I went to that cervical chiropractor. Oh no! Oh, place. here we go. This is going to be dull too. <laughs> Jeez, Almighty! You dull. you just drive this work. show into any ditch that's nearby. Yeah. yeah well, Why don't you give him a ditch. call and tell him you went to the chiropractor? Well, I, I don't communicate that way with him, but you know, hey, you don't even need a ditch. You, right. I'll use a pothole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what happened at the cervical chiropractor? Oh yeah, tell us. Uh, well. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, he, had, he did a very slight adjustment. They put you on a table and within like two seconds, uh, on each side, you're adjusted. Then he sits in the chair for 15 minutes. Uh -huh. says, How much does that cost you? Uh, that one was 70 bucks. Uh, the initial one was oh, really? 330 yeah. and, uh, you know, I, and I was told that that's not bad, but, uh, He's going to see me uh, twice a week for three weeks, and then does one your health insurance cover it? No. See, oh, mine does. Mine does. Does it really? Kaiser. Uh, well, yeah. I, have, I have Actors Equity. It's awesome. Uh, you know what I? You know what I'm getting starting uh, March first. We are going to be using the SAG AFTRA. Oh, uh, pension that's really good too. Uh, uh, medical plan. I, uh, they're they're all kind of alike the union ones, but I hear that. That uh, SAG AFTRA is really, really good, and it I is. hear that uh, the one you've got, a a Actors Guild, is it? Yeah, Actors, Equity. Actors Equity is very Actors, good. Yeah. Is very good yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Well, how, uh, how much? And and the price, the price is not bad. It's something like five hundred for my wife and I, five hundred and thirty-eight dollars a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I was which paying one hundred fifty a quarter just for myself, and, yeah. and um, yeah, and. and I'm on Cobra right now because I didn't work enough weeks in a year, so now I'm paying a lot. <laughs> but um, yeah, but what I'm saying is, well, what, what this yeah. is is this is going to be my uh, 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 supplemental so for my me my Medicare supplemental. Yeah, right. And yeah. man, yeah, all that I, I couldn't get anything that cheap outside of the union, and the and the union thing is. Ter I looked at it; it's terrific. Coverage is like old-fashioned insurance that we used to have like 30, 40 years ago. Well, well, you you know, know, they what cover it, everything, yeah. 70 to 100 percent of everything. Yeah, well, uh, in this particular case, I can't remember mm -hmm. how what the percentages are, but I know that, like, for instance, with her insurance with Oxford, I think we had a $1,000 deductible. So I never, ever, because they were only paying 20 percent, Medicare was paying yeah. the rest, I never got to that 1000 Okay, right. and right. here at AFTRA, it's two fifty for uh, for her and two fifty for me. How are you getting the AFTRA? Because you had all those years at working at the radio stations, uh, now, and uh, it's part of like uh, your pension. I, you know something? This thing just fell into my lap one day. I get this letter from AFTRA saying you're eligible for yeah. this senior plan. Yeah, and that's I've been, right. Because uh, you worked for so long under AFTRA, so it's part of your well, pension plan. Well, I didn't work that long. I mean, my pension oh. from AFTRA is under a thousand dollars a month. I, I remember oh. you telling me that the reason, one of the reasons you joined, was that you wanted the insurance. And this is back in nineteen. No, 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 no. And no. it didn't give you the insurance. No, that wasn't it at, at all. Uh, there was some other reason. I can't remember. They what had it different was now. rules back then, Phil. Uh, like you, they, you yeah. didn't even have to work have work weeks and stuff that if you were in the union you got the insurance but then they but, changed it you know i hey i was you know in the room with you when you said hey uh this no, is no, good no I no no no, they, no that, that was that wasn't it there was some other reason why i was a signatory to the union as well yeah. uh but uh, i made myself and and uh, you know literally a union shop but mm -hmm. and i kept paying uh what was it? There, there was something that they they screwed me over on. Uh, right, it was the insurance. It wasn't the insurance. No, I was in, okay. I was insured on my own. I can't remember what it was exactly because it's so long ago now. But uh, that I had, uh, I was working at a non-union station, but I kept my union thing going. And because I, oh yeah, because my company hired me. In other words, I, I was uh, the station paid money to my company. My company paid me a salary, 
So I made it, our company a union shop uh, because yeah. so and uh, yes, and then we what we wanted was pension and welfare. I think was what we wanted to be put into, uh, and. And at one moment at a time, they said, well, well, you're not working at a union station. And I said, that's right. not the point. You're, they're working f I'm working for my company, which is a signatory to SAG-AFTRA. And so they screwed us over. I think uh, we kept paying money into pension and welfare for me. And somehow that money just disappeared, and I never got that pension and welfare. The pension and welfare I get now, I got for all the work I did here in New York years earlier. Uh does any of that make sense, folks? Well, we got a couple of more. It, it makes totally makes sense to me because I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But I can't believe they screwed you over. On, you had a, no. I mean, that was really it wasn't smart like they a, a, it, a company, it, a union company, and then how could they? Yeah. How could they not honor that? I don't get it. Well, uh, uh, nobody ever sent us a check. <laughs> you know, nobody ever said, "Here, here's the money back." You know. So These anyway. union sometimes they rip you off. Though, but too. anyway, on the on the on the other side of life here. Uh, they really have come through, and I've got this now. And you know, it's it's an amount that we could pay even if my wife wasn't working. I mean, it's it's you know, five hundred and twenty-eight dollars for for three months for both of us, and to get all the stuff we get, we get the, you know, we get the pharmaceutical. We don't have to get a Part D in in Medicare. Uh, we get dental, twenty-five hundred dollars a year in dental, which yeah. most of these, uh, uh, the stuff I had at Sirius was only fifteen hundred. So I mean, yeah. it's really, it's really, it's really terrific. So that's going to be our new, uh, because I, because how she how her company was getting screwed is they were paying twenty one thousand dollars a year for our medical policy, which was only being used as a supplemental, which I think right. is criminal of Oxford. I mean, it was just it, it was horrible of them to do that. I I think that the inter entertainers unions are all actually part of the Teamsters under. You don't see it, but it's all part of Teamsters, and the Teamsters get incredible benefits. That's my, why that's why we well, get that. Well, we're not me we're not members of the Teamsters. No, well, actually, I think no. If, no. I, I got to, when I first joined the union, I got. You know a bunch what it could Teamsters be? You know, you know what it could be is like what, what I'm getting is uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. It, yeah, is is the and Delta Dental and so on. Yeah, it could be that all these unions batch together. And make one deal for this massive amount of people, I think so they can they get do. better rates. That my could be. Daughter, that could be. Uh, my daughter do. worked uh, before she worked for Variety. Worked for the uh, Directors Guild mm -hmm. in uh, Southern California, and basically the Directors Guild is a union, and uh, yes, and, and provides benefits, and uh, that's you know a, a lot of what they did. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it it was a um, uh, just a. You know, um, uh, I, I, it was wonderful when I first I got it and I went, ah, who who needs this? And then I started reading it and I went, they got to be kidding. So I called them up. I said, I'm really qualified. And they go, oh, yeah, you're qualified. So is your wife. <laughs> and now here's what wow. you got to do. And it, and and it was a thing because it was the sign up period at the first of the year. And of course, I missed that. And they said, as long as you have a life changing situation, you can join the, the plan any time and a life-changing altering situation would be that you have dropped your old insurance and we have to have a letter from your insurance company saying your insurance has been dropped and then you can start the beginning of any month you want to yeah so, that's part of the obamacare is if you have a life-changing experience you can join outside of the enrollment period. and a life-changing experience is that you lost your or you you dropped your old insurance Right. You know, Alex, you took my neck conversation right into the into the gutter again. Well, I have you more know? people than we had during your neck conversation. <laughs> How is your neck, by the way, Phil? Uh, well, I, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Alex is pissed. Boy, I can hardly wait till you get a catheter. Okay, I can hardly wait. <laughs> March fourteenth. Uh, March fourteenth, you get the catheter. Yeah, I didn't know you had to have a catheter after that operation. Ten days, ten to fourteen days. Ten to fourteen. Are you be on here? Uh, yeah, if I can. Uh, no, yeah, you know. probably the first couple of days you'll be woozy from all those wonderful drugs and whatever. But then I may have to stand, you know. Uh, so I'll just put the camera on a uh, tripod, and uh, uh, you know, because I won't be able to sit for a while. 
uh, <laughs> what they tell me. You won't uh, be able brother. to sit for a while. This is uh, this is. Don't they? You would think that by now that he's having, uh, ladies and gentlemen. In case you're wondering what kind of operation he's having, he's having his uh, a prostate operated on, uh, oh. and uh, well, not on. He's having it removed. Never moved. And uh, what a way to lose weight, huh? What a way to lose weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> three ounces or so. Yeah, it's about the I'll size take- <laughs> size of a walnut. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's a grapefruit. <laughs> but you would just think they by now would have had some kind of way of doing this that wasn't that traumatic to your existence, where you have to walk they, around they peeing do. into a bag. They do. Uh, it's the thing that David Hijack, Hijack uh, had. Uh, but everybody is telling me that the chance of the cancer reoccurring is far greater than if you just remove well, it. Well, if you remove it, then where, where's the cancer going to go? It's left you. It's gone. It's, yeah. you it's know. in the garbage. Yeah, that's yeah. the general plan. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, that's better then. It's better to walk now, around. Now, you see, that's what happens. See, that, that's, that's why I can't get anybody listening to this goddamn fucking show. And it, it, oh, yeah, I don't get those looks. thousands and thousand numbers because I've got a bunch of old farts talking about <laughs> prostate <laughs> operations. Well, you know, like I said, your viewers die <laughs> off. It's not that they it's not that they leave the show. They just die off uh, as, as they're watching. watching. As they're watching, they're dying off. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, um, uh, yeah, one other wait thing. A minute. Jeff's been sitting there very quietly. Scenes. Oh, yeah. You, well, I'm doing Dickinson's Dickinson's tonight. Uh, I'm I doing your, Stella Artois. <laughs> <laughs> I got your big bang. And I tell you, it, it's uh, it's a little short of a uh, of a Big Bang. Uh, no, no, it's good though. I, it's very tasty coffee. Espresso is good. Uh, French uh, roast is good. Uh, this is a medium. Major Dickinson's, by the way, is a dark roast. You said it yeah, was a roast. light, a mild. No, it's a dark roast. Well, no, no, I said Big Bang. Was but Big Bang medium. is is it's just got a nice taste to it. Uh, yeah, it says vibrant blast of tropical fruit. Yeah, well, what, what is it? I don't taste it. Do you taste the tropical fruit in there? No. Uh, it, it's it's not uh, a very strong. No, it's not know. strong, but you know what it is? I, I usually do it during the day because it's just a nice light coffee, you know? Yeah. It's a good morning. It's a good morning coffee is what it yeah. is. Yeah, uh, I need something well, a little I, I just, more. Well, I just bought... 50, 60 K cups of that shit. So I better like it. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you drink coffee at night like that and sleep? No, I, oh. can. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't oh. drink after like, but you know, PM. it's amazing how Doesn't well you can me. sleep on coffee. Once you put a Xanax in you. <laughs> Xanax. Coffee to me, is like drinking water. You know, it really? doesn't uh, doesn't affect me. I, I don't. Know. You know, I never was a coffee drinker when I was younger, and all of a sudden one day I just kind of like, eh, eh, what the hell, you know? Well, yes, Jeff. Yes. Well, do you drink coffee every day? Yeah, I I get up at about four thirty a.m. and uh, I have two cups of coffee, and uh, I watch the news, and then I go to work, and I'll have a cup, maybe two. And I come home, I'll have a cup. Yeah. Well, I used to drink coffee like that, crazy, yeah. uh, every day. I, I don't know. I had it in the morning, in the afternoon, all the time. And it never bothered me. Right. And then I said, well, i got to see what it would be like if I didn't have any coffee. I couldn't wake up in the morning. Really? Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe how much the uh, drug effect. That coffee can oh, have you when you take take plenty of it. I look forward to getting up and having a really strong cup of coffee. And now no, I'm getting coffee. And um, I can wake up, but uh, I, I miss the coffee. That's all. That's yeah. I, I would think it's the same thing as smoking, you know. Uh, you know, it's it's a habit. Yeah. Well, when, I when... I never I never smoke. Uh, you know, when I started drinking coffee, about the time I first uh, came to went to California, uh, I didn't ever like coffee. I never drank it and whatever. And then all of a sudden, I started. They had a coffee machine at the uh, at the at KMEL, and I, I just thought I'd have I, I thought I'd have some coffee, 
And that, I, that was bad coffee. Yeah, but I, that's what I grew up on was that coffee. That's the thing that hooked me on the coffee. And I've never been one to do like, you know, five or six cups of coffee a day. I got to stay awake. I'm good for one cup a day usually, now maybe two. But And, and I don't even drink all of this. This will be about half gone by the time the show is over. So it's not like I'm guzzling the stuff down. But I do like the taste of coffee, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I love it. Yeah. I, I heard that a medium medium roast coffees actually usually have more caffeine than dark roast coffees. Really? Yeah. Really? See? A lot of people think the opposite, but I... Hmm? Maybe, maybe because I like dark roast coffees is why I could drink as many cups a day because it doesn't have as much caffeine. Well, but yeah. what, what, you're, what, you're, what you're not saying is how much it costs, you know, how much... Uh, how, how how much impact it has on you because you think it's a dark roast and that that's going to have more bang. But, uh, you know, it could be that big bang has more bang in it for all you know. Uh, uh, no, nah, nah, it doesn't have the bang. <laughs> yeah, well, I has like the name, it. Not, not the bang. I like it. It's it's sweet coffee. Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's try and get these numbers going a little higher here. <laughs> hey, strip. Huh? <laughs> Let's talk about depends or something. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, or or wow, well, uh, you know something? Know. Nobody, what other old people? Stuff? Nobody <laughs> listens to our audio anymore. <laughs> Most people listen to our uh, our video. It's, it's uh, there you go. How we get oh. the majority of our so, people listening? I mean, I still get the same amount of listeners I would get if I just did audio only. But now it's starting to drift off into the video thing so anyway uh, so you rather talk about uh richard pryor sleeping with marlon brando or the what yes <laughs> didn't you hear about or, this just, and, and by the, the way uh, this isn't just a rumor oh my god uh pryor's wife who was married to him twice they, he was married to him once divorced him Janet later Lee? is that the same one from uh king kong no uh, no that's uh yeah, then they got married again, and she was with him till the end of his life. And uh, Quincy Jones, in an interview, said that Marlon Brando would fuck anything that moved. He would fuck a radiator, I think is how he put it. <laughs> then, I think he used that term. And he said he slept with people like, and then he mentions Richard Pryor. He also mentioned uh, one other person as well. I'm trying to remember who. Uh, but Richard Pryor. And so they immediately people went. This has got to be ridiculous. Uh, let's. Let, they went to Pryor's wife and said, "You know what Quincy Jones said? Said that he slept. Richard slept with Marlon Brando." He said. She said, "Yeah, he did." <laughs> I don't know why I find he, that so funny. He said that those were the days. He said. She said <laughs> when people did James drugs like went, crazy and and they were out for a good time and. Uh, he and Marlon got it on once. James Baldwin, Marvin Gaye, yeah, Richard yeah, Pryor. Yeah. yeah, Marvin Gaye was the one I couldn't believe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gaye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, who was it? Bo uh, David Bowie and... Um, uh, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was only one bed in the room. <laughs> yeah, but 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 uh, so so yeah, so that was the big re reveal today that wow. uh, you know um, Richard Pryor did it with Marlon Brando. So. Damn, uh, was that the fat Marlon Brando or the thin <laughs> Marlon Brando? Uh, let's see here. That would have to be probably the th skinnier and Marlon Brando. Believe it or not, after look a guy in his, his first well after the first couple of movies, so he started gaining weight. And if you look at him in, in, in a lot of the pictures he did after uh, Streetcar Named Desire, um, you pretty well would have to say that, you know, that he, he was putting on the pounds here and there. It was, but it wasn't until later that we really noticed it, you know. Yeah, uh, he was. He looked great in Street Streetcar. Well, Man, in Streetcar was... Named Desire, I can't think of any one visage that is more a gay icon than Stanley Kowalski. Rip yeah. T-shirt, <laughs> Stella. You know, I mean, uh, absolutely a gay icon. So I, I you know, I people go, oh, Marlon Brando was gay. No, he wasn't gay. He would just fuck anything. 
you know, made pee-pee feel good, you know. And so that's what he'd do. And uh, in, in the case of Richard Pryor, I mean, you know, who was getting the bad part of that deal? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean... But when well, they Richard said, Pryor was on drugs a lot, so maybe maybe he yeah, was when like, they, didn't know what he was when they said Marvin Gaye, I'm going. I would never have thought Marvin Gaye because you know you, you remember the songs he sang; they were all really sexual, right? Yeah, you wouldn't no even. wonder his father shot him. Sexual healing. Yeah, yeah, sexual so, healing. So, so, so was it Marvin Gaye and Brando, or Marvin Brando Gaye and Brando, and Pryor, or, no, and, and, Pryor and, and Pryor and and James James Baldwin. James, yeah. yeah, Baldwin, yeah, James Baldwin too, yeah. yeah, not not one of the Baldwin brothers, folks. No, 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 you know. no, 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 no. No, the guy who wrote the books, right? black black writer, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, he liked black men. Now I wish, I wish, I wish Quincy would have. Oh, and then he then he did another reveal about Michael Jackson. He said that Michael stole his music like crazy from other people. And then he, he gave examples of things that Michael had literally lifted from somebody else's work and said he was the biggest song thief of all time. So Michael Jackson was the Robin Williams of songs? <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Poor Robin. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, he's stealing in heaven now. Yeah. Uh, you know. But uh, uh, so that that was yeah that was the big news today. I'm I'm glad we we gave you some news you didn't hear, Ray. Yeah, well, I, I I I'm looking at it right now. I mean, I can't even just it's just blowing my mind. I don't know why. And it's I, not like it's not like one of those rumors that somebody said like Quincy Jones, and then all of a sudden other people went, Oh no, I knew Richard. He would have never done something. No, his wife says, Yeah, of course he did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like he, everybody here is saying. It's in true, fact, yeah. she said I think something to the effect that he liked to brag about it. <laughs> you know that he came home and bragged about it. Hey, guess who I had sex with? Marlon Brando. Hey. So, but, but, uh, <laughs> Scott's getting the chills now. The only person that's denying it is Richard Pryor's daughter. She says it didn't happen. Well, she, how would she know? How would she know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. She just doesn't want to believe it. <laughs> uh, who, uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I think it's 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 entirely believable. And, yeah. you know, the way the wife discussed it was that was a time when people just did this sort of thing. It was just, you know. Yeah. It's quaaludes and, uh, you know. I don't know. There was a time. I got to tell you, there was a time in my life that I, when I was in, I think, my 30s, I thought hey, maybe I had a think maybe I ought to try sleeping with a guy and see what it's like you know I and um, then wasn't me no I, I'll tell you what happened people know that people know this story and and Albert used to give me a bad time about it because I actually told the story on the air do you know what I'm getting into Scott knows yeah. what I'm going for I, here you know what I'm going for Scott you know you know the story Scott. <laughs> heard it too many times I don't want to hear it again <laughs> no, I was at I was at a uh, be a good supporting contestant uh, uh, panelist. I was well, maybe I bet maybe I won't tell it now, and then he will have walked out of the room for nothing. <laughs> uh, no, I was at a, I was in an orgy. <laughs> uh, and I and I and I was there, and I was making out with this woman, and all of a sudden somebody starts blowing me. <laughs> And I look down, and it's a guy. And I figured, well, you know, I, I always said to myself, I wanted some kind of experience this way, so maybe I should just try and get into it. And then all of a sudden, the side of his face brushed against my belly or something, and there was stubble, and I said, nah, nah, stubble, uh-uh. It just, it, you know... If you could, like, keep it just to the mouth and I could imagine it was a woman, that's one thing. But now I'm getting stubble involved here. And I said, thank you very much. It's that very nice. no different than when a woman shaves, uh, you know, uh, her pussy. And, you know, a, a week later, you've got some growth in. And uh, it, it's got stubble. Yeah. 
Or or an Italian woman shaves her mustache off. Yeah. 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 yeah but not a wrong pitch. No, but it's the thing that, you know, uh, so yeah. it was at that point I suddenly realized that my my desire to open my eyes to newer vistas was not to be. So I like yeah, so double. so Albert always gave me a bad time about this. He says, "So you're gay, huh?" And I went, "No, the purpose of this story is to tell you that I found out that I wasn't." You know, that I know I'm not gay because I had somebody do something to me and I didn't enjoy it. And therefore, I know I'm not gay. But do you know you're not gay? All I know is you're anti-stubble. I didn't, you know. I'm anti-stubble. <laughs> exactly. I mean, if the stubble wasn't there. Yeah. You know, you'd be, uh, you know, enjoying yourself. A life. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Something like that. Uh, was there so uh well that didn't drive away too many people okay but uh, we, we had we had we had more people earlier until you got into your oh uh, of course it, it's definitely me i i'm i'm the one that uh, took the show and drove it off into the ditch into the ditch well, you tried. But, uh i know how to get more back how's that just, uh, well my neck now feels really good oh jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> We well, could destroy, describe your photo again. Yeah. yeah, I was listening in the car. I turned. I even turned it off. Today, oh my today, my today, my <laughs> wife, my wife got me. A, are you ready for this, folks? It got me a foot doctor because I've had yeah. these foot problems, but I they started going yeah, away. They started going away. My feet aren't as numb as they were, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Now I have no reason to go to him yet. My dad has that. He has numb feet. Yeah, yeah. It's a it, it's a nerve thing. It's uh, yeah, he had to quit playing but golf. But let, let's get away from that, well, okay? Let's, that let's talk get, about youthful. Let's stuff. get the yeah, some youthful youthful stuff. Uh, uh, hey, uh, you uh, fucked any I've fucked any hot chicks lately, Ray? I'm married. <laughs> See, we can't <laughs> even get that. That, 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 that would be what younger radio would do. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, man. And of course, I, if I, I said if I, I said I had, then I would have no end of grief from my wife. So you know, it's it's. I used to get dates just from answering your phone at the station. You yeah. know, uh, it, it would it'd be amazing. You know, women would call up and uh, can I, I talk to Alex? Well, no, he's not available. Well, uh, what about you? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. That one yeah. Famous. So yeah. you, in other words, what you're saying is you took my cast offs. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you took what was left over? Yeah, I, I took what couldn't make it crawl over to the other studio. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And where did you go, take any of them home? Uh, yes. And did you have sex with them? Uh, yes. And you never told me? Well, no, you met some of them. Oh, did I? Yeah. Um, you remember one time we went to this comedy club, you, me, and Rigelski and Susan. Yeah. And I had a, a Susan date. was my and, wife at the time. And so we're, um, we're, we're at this comedy club, and somebody sees me, a friend of my uh, girlfriend, ex-wife, uh, sees me there with this other girl. And uh, so she calls her. My ex-wife, who was a, a girlfriend at the time, storms in all pissed off. And I said, oh, here, let me introduce you to Joe Rigelski's uh, date. <laughs> and they just... <laughs> and they oh, you son of a fucking <laughs> low-life bitch. Yeah. Wow. That was... Yeah. I don't remember then, that, uh, but that's, that's, a, that's about as sleazy and as skeezy as you can get. And when I dated that girl that worked for Journey as a uh, bookkeeper... Mm -hmm. uh, we all went out to breakfast together, you know, uh, in uh, in Mill Valley. Uh, so, yeah. so you don't you don't remember? She was actually pretty cute. You know, they were both cute. They were both pretty good looking. Well, I had very one, good looking fans. Oh yeah, one yeah. of them, uh, not this, not those two. Uh, one of them calls up, and uh, Bobby Slayton and uh, uh, who else was there? Uh, I think Jeremy Kramer. So uh, I get this one on the phone, and she says she wants to meet us. So the three of us uh, uh, jump in my car mm -hmm. uh, after the show, and we try to meet her. And she, you know, uh, there was no cell phones back then. 
So I had a caller from a payphone. She says, no, I'm over here. And, you know, we're, we're running around. We never found her. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, yeah. we tried. Yeah. Well, um, old days. Uh, if, if, I don't know if Scott's ever heard this story. I think he probably has if he's listened to me any amount of time. But I, when I was working in New York City, I was working at WMCA, and I would get off in the morning. I was off at 6 in the morning. And uh, one morning, uh, somebody was answering the phones there, said, you have a call, and I answer the phone. And it's this very sexy-sounding woman who, uh, who then begins to tell me everything that she wanted to do with me sexually. And it was amazing. It was, you're blowing the story, Scott. It's almost it, a play that's that word. It was amazing. It was amazing. And so uh, she calls a couple of mornings in a row. And then one morning I'm there with a friend of mine. And, uh, and, and he says, who's that? And I said, listen to this. And I put, kind of put the phone there. And she goes, wow. He says, why didn't you go over to where she lives? She was living at the McAlpin Hotel. He says, why don't you go, why don't you go over there? She wants you to come over there. And he says, I said, uh, I don't know. You know, and she says, I dare you. Not only that, I double dog dare you. Now, look, when you're double dog dared, <laughs> you are required by the man code to do, even if it's like a soap pod, you have to do it. Okay. So I said, okay. And I said to her, "Where? What room? Blah 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 blah." She gave me another room, and he says, "Okay, good, good. Let me know how it goes." So I go over to the hotel. I get up to like the twenty seventh floor or something like that. Go to the hotel room door, knock on it. She opens the door, and I'm not exaggerating this. Have you ever been in an apartment where you wondered how they got the piano in there? <laughs> They took the window out. Yeah, well, uh, I wondered how she ever got in there because when she opened the door, she was wider than the door frame. <laughs> she had to go in sideways. Yeah. And she said to me, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. Now, me being a decent human being, and for all you people out there who think that maybe I would, would be... Uh, uh, that I must have harassed some women or taken advantage of women or whatever, to show you that I am a nice guy and is proof of it, I said, oh, no, I'll come in. And I went in. And before I know it, I've got 300 pounds of woman all over me. <laughs> and I figure, well, I could tell her I don't want to, but that would hurt her feelings. And all her life being this fat, she's had her feelings hurt. So I quickly had sex with some crease. I don't know what it was exactly. <laughs> it was moist. It came came like a motherfucker <laughs> right then and there. Okay. Uh, by the way, we do say that this is a uh, R-rated show, folks. So don't don't you know? And uh, I I then thanked her very much and got the hell out of there. And I went home. And I get home and not there for about. Five minutes when the phone rings. It's my friend. <laughs> and he says, how did it go? I said, amazing. I said, he said, what was she like? I said, you know, usually these kind of things happen and they're losers, right? I said, this woman, I don't know why, it, why, what she sees in me. She's just the hottest thing I've ever had in the sack. And the stuff she did to me, you wouldn't believe. And he said, well, I'm happy you had a nice time. Goodbye. And he hangs up. So I get into bed and I'm sleeping. About three hours later, the phone rings. And I pick it up. And he, it's him. And the first words out of his mouth are, you fucking son of a bitch. And I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, really? I said, what happened? He said, I went up there, she opened the door, and all there was was this really fat woman who says to me, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. <laughs> and I said to him, so what did you do? He said, what could I do? I didn't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> I imagine that this woman was getting more sex than any other woman in New York City simply by using that line, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. 
But to show you what a trooper my friend was, he, he, call, he was curious. And he called her and said, do you want to go out on a date? And she said, sure. So he took his car and he picked her up at the McAlpin Hotel and he drove her out to his place in Queens just so he could get her into his apartment so he could get her on a scale and see how much she actually weighed. <laughs> and the only way he described it to me was the scale went to 300 and then to 25. So it went all the way around. So that's my story. We didn't gain any listeners with that story. We didn't lose any. Okay? So that's my, that's my little story. Well, what else is happening in the news? Let's see. Uh, we've got uh, a person who works for, um, 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 for Trump. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he, he, uh, his uh, aide or who beats his so, wife? Yeah, yeah. So beats two wives, beats and, he, and he's hooked up with uh, Hope uh, that that hottie that's been working for Trump, that twenty six year old hottie that's taking his um, yeah communications thing. Hope, uh, I forgot her last name. Yeah. Have you? Uh, well, he's been dating her, Hicks. and I get uh, Hope Hicks. Yeah. So one of the ex wives. What? Uh, yeah. Your connection sucks. Your connection sucks. It's, it's good and it's bad. Yeah. He's frozen well, Hope right Hicks, now. <laughs> uh, uh, supposedly was getting warned by one of the ex-wives that uh, that he's that he you know he, he hits, and uh, they're saying that Kelly uh, knew this uh, a few months ago, but I guess they did an investigation. Well, now Kelly is getting all kinds of rations of shit for this, isn't he? Because yeah, he, he knew so, and he didn't do anything about it. I think they investigated. Yeah. And uh, now he's uh, he's had to resign. So you know, I guess they did something about it. They at least they didn't uh, you know go to form a judgment yeah. just on an accusation. Right. Uh, which is good. What is that? What is that noise? Sounds like Skype. Sounds like somebody's ringing. Oh, Tim is calling here. Add to group. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Hello, Tim. Uh, and we lost. Did we lost Scott again? I don't know. Good evening. Yes, Tim. Yes. What? Hey, hey, what? Hey, hey. What new? Uh, what new? Uh, horrible thing do you have to tell us about, Tim? Well, I think with Trump is uh, in deep depression because. Uh, Omarosa on uh, the celebrity, uh, a celebrity uh, big, brother big brother is getting higher ratings than the uh, love triangle at the White House. <laughs> but you, you know what the latest thing is? I believe Hope dated Lee Wanda Lew Corey Lewandowski too. Mm -hmm. What? Gets around, huh? Yeah, I Hope supposedly was dating was dating Corey Lewandowski too. Who knows how to throw a punch? Obviously, because he did it at one of the rallies, but. There's, there's obviously rumors out there that he's behind these pictures coming out. Oh, really? So there's a triangle going on. You know, and how can you be a communication director for the White House and never communicate? <laughs> she never talks. She never talks. Yeah. She, she sends out Raj Shaw, whatever his name was. That poor guy had to, that did the press conference today was just devastated. Why was he out there? Because John Kelly is is a is a is a uh, he's a yellow bellied scum, and he won't even come out and admit that he he knew all along. And in fact, the, the, one of the other stories I think it was Associated Press of Washington Post said that uh, Rob Porter offered to resign a few months ago, and John Kelly wanted wanted to keep him on. Because they can't get smart people to work at the White House, so when you when you when you have such a bad reputation, you can't, can't get get smart, organized, intelligent people. You got to get people that have flaw, giant flaws as well. Yeah, but let me. You know, uh, the, yeah, here's the, here's the point though. Some somebody was mentioning today that the the problem with uh, Kelly is is that he was brought in to kind of corral Trump. In other words to get him on message, to stop him doing these uh, these uh, uh, reckless tweets and so on. 
and that as time has gone on, he's become Trump's bitch. You know that yeah, he's Kelly, but, it, but Kelly, but Kelly's on the same wavelength as Trump. There's not that much difference. They're both pretty racist, uh, and they're both kind of. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't think they. I don't think they wake up in the morning and say, "How can we be racist this morning?" Well, they do. That's what, you know with their immigration policy. They just they just want to, or you know they don't bad talk white people. You know they just don't do it. But uh, well, how can you bad you know, talk white you know, people? We're you know, wonderful. You know who's skipping out on the whole deal, though? Who ran for president? I shouldn't try to tell a joke when Tim's talking. He won't laugh. What? (laughs) Trump ran for president with Mike Pence. They're a team. Trump had no experience in the government. Pence was an executive in the government for how many years? Pence should be the guiding light in that White House and shouldn't put up with any of this crap that's gone on He's like in, he's in absentia. He's it's not, not over Congress helping any of the bills. He's not doing anything to clean up all this. Yeah, but you know, no, you but wait a minute, wait a minute. You see, you keep changing topics because you get onto your agenda. Uh, but well, no, no, it, no, no, but, but, but to answer that not, for you, to answer that for you, I don't hold that against Pence, okay? And I don't hold him. I mean, I don't like Pence, and I don't like his politics, and I don't like the politics of okay. all of these no. guys. Wait a minute, let me finish. But uh, nevertheless. Pence is a good vice president for him because he is in his corner. He will stand up for him. He knows what the job is, and he signed up for it, and he's doing it. And so I don't hold that against Pence. I don't hold it against Pence for, you know, rooting for the home team. I don't like no, Pence. No, but you know. He should avoid these scandals, though. He should keep him keep them from having these type of scandals. Well, he's always off to the side. He never gets enmeshed in any of this shit. Most vice I know, presidents. Keeps, most I vice even heard that when they got emails from the transition team, mm-hmm. his emails had disappeared. One of the one of the, um, uh, the, the house committees. Yeah. yeah. Most, he, he's most, keeping a clean slate. Most vice presidents, uh, their job is to go to funerals and, uh, you know, if there's a tie in the Senate to uh, to cast a vote, and and that was about it. And it and it had been that way uh, until I think Biden was given uh, a little bit more leeway, and Biden of course, was, Bush Al, Al Gore was given quite a bit of leeway. Well, Biden, Cheney Biden, did a lot. Cheney did a yeah. lot. Oh, Cheney Biden. did everything. And the, the thing with wait, the, wait the a minute, thing hold, on a second, hold on a second. Hold on a second. He had no experience. With Biden, well, we know that. With Biden, um, uh, he, he did not. He, when he took the job, I mean, when he said, "Okay, I'll run with you for vice president," said, "I will not be vice president unless I ha- I'm in." in the room for every major decision and that I get to say what I feel about it. In other words, he was a hands-on vice president. And right. he was a hands-on vice president because that was one of his his uh, demands if he was going to run. Yeah. yeah. And, they, and they had a good partnership. Very good partnership. Did anybody see, Biden? Anybody see the interview more... with Biden today that Andrea Mitchell did? Uh, the, yes, a very good, very good interview. Yeah. Yeah, and he doesn't show you. He's like you. He doesn't show his age. Well, you know something. <laughs> he's very classy. Yes, Jeff. I th- I think uh, we were looking at him the other day, and I think he's lost weight on purpose, which indicates uh, he wants to run for president again. Well, all I know is he he looks great, uh, but he you know if he decides to run, he's going to be awfully old. He'd be right. the oldest guy ever to run for president. Seventy-eight, I think. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that the same age that Trump will be when he, if he runs in twenty twenty? No, he's he's seventy. He was seventy when he was elected. So that's seventy four. Seventy one now. Yeah, he'll be yeah. seventy four. Yeah. So he'll be seventy four. But you know, that's awfully old. You know? Uh uh, and, and I think in this day and age, I hate to say this, I mean, but I can say it, I'm an old guy. Okay. I can say it. And I think even Jeff, who's another old guy, so we're the two oldest guys in the room, would agree with me on this, that I don't know that it isn't a younger man's job. You know? Well, I I it. Younger, huh? There's a lot of stress. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Jeff. What? I agree with you 100% that uh, it, it's a yeah. young man's job. Yeah. Uh, Pelosi's showing her age, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's 37. She, uh, she's, how old is she? 
uh, 77, I think. Yeah, well, then I guess she's showing her age. You know. Yeah. I, but, she's allowed to show yeah, but you know she she did that marathon uh, yesterday of uh, what what was it nine hours uh, uh, semi. Hours, right. um, but she babbled the whole time, but uh, you know she was able to stand. Yeah, I uh, wonder. I wonder how she. You, you got to remember that Biden is married to a doctor too. Yeah, so yeah. he's pretty healthy for his age. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, but uh, you know. Uh, this whole thing about healthy for his age, what we are saying is he has age, you know? And right. um, uh, I got to tell you, I mean, I don't, I think I'm, I, I don't think I'm in as bad shape as a lot of people my age. Um, but uh, in fact, how old am I now? I forgot. Oh, God. I'm 78, right? Huh? I don't know. But can can you see the Democratic yeah. primaries with sixteen dominees on the stage? Yeah, I guess I chose I am old when I can't remember my age, or maybe I just don't want to remember it. The internet says you're seventy eight. Yes, uh, yeah. I'm very happy that I'm seventy two and that you're older than I am. Yeah, I know, I know. You can <laughs> you can look at me like you can have you can put on your hood and your scythe and just follow me around, you know. Uh, I'm 63 and I'm falling apart faster than you are. <laughs> but, you know, uh, at, at 78, um, uh, I just, you know, I think a younger person could do the show better than me. I just I just yeah. think that that's you don't have to agree, Scott. You can say, oh, no, Alex, it doesn't matter. You 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 you're ageless, Alex. What kind of friend are you, Scott? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then we got people, you know, listening to us out there. As young kids are going, I can't listen to this. One guy's got a <laughs> prostate problem. Another guy's got a heart problem. The other guy, the other guy looks like uh, like Colonel Sanders. And uh, the only good guy in the bunch is uh, is is uh, is an actor. So he has to look good. <laughs> are you are you in trouble with Facebook, Alex? What do you mean by in trouble with Facebook? Why? Yeah. Why would I be in trouble with well, Facebook? Right after you quit Facebook, Jim, Quir Jim Carrey quits. So they're kind of blaming Jim Carrey's leaving on you, I think. Oh, really? Mm. But well, you saw what Jim Carrey quit Facebook. Yeah, that's, yeah. We, we talked about that earlier. Uh, that, yeah, I, uh, was, I just got home. So. That but, doesn't make any sense to me, though. Because that, you'd have to quit everything. Every, every, everything that you own is exploiting somebody somewhere. Well, well, it's a publicity stunt, but it's, exactly. it's a one way to get a point. But it is a way to get a point across. Well, I think I think it's a good point to get across. I think you know when Facebook started, there was something wonderful about Facebook because it was kind of like the Wild West, you know. It, it and and what happened with Facebook is it was being defined by the very people that were using it. And now right. that it's become big money, and all of that. The whole stakes of the game have changed, and now there are too many rules, and there's you know. It's just, it's not fun anymore. There's, there's too much vitriol, and it really uh, changed once the Trump election, uh, well, even in the latter days of Bush, uh, what had happened was it used to be, oh, here's my grandkids, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're going here, and then it became a political platform uh, for people to vent their, uh, their anger and their uh, frustrations. Uh, and, and I think that that really... Uh, Added to people pulling away well, from I mean, Facebook. The first, no, my, my first step in pulling away was when I took this show from Facebook uh, and put it on YouTube. And I got to tell you something. I've been doing this now for what? This is almost, is this three weeks or something? How many weeks oh. have we been doing this on YouTube? I don't know. Two, three weeks. Uh, th two. This signal has never glitched once. Do you remember how many times Facebook would go down or freeze up or I'd have to restart things? Never goes down. And the picture is beautiful. You know. Was uh, this platform always available? Yes. Uh, uh, but hmm. I, you know, I, the reason I started using Facebook Live was everybody started using Facebook Live. When I first used Facebook Live, we used to get gajillions of people because it, it, it was a it was a novelty and then as the novelty wore off then we got less than a gajillion 
I get more now here at any given moment than I than I got on uh, on Facebook Live. Um, uh, but at the end of the night, the numbers were higher. But I think there was something wrong with that. Uh, and and in any event, what I found is this is easier for people to use. All you have to do is bookmark the page, and it's just sitting there waiting for me to click a button here and to, to activate. And I've even got it now, so there's a clock on it that tells you how many minutes down till the next show. That's fine if you're uh, in, the, in with East Coast time. But when I look at the clock, it shows a couple of hours and minutes off from uh, where it actually is. And uh, I think either Jason or Renee said it was the same same issue. Uh, you said so, subtract three. Uh, is that how it works? No, you yeah. don't have to subtract anything oh. because what it does is it says so many hours till the next show. There's no time oh, on it. Oh, okay. Don't you yeah. don't you look at it the actual the actual uh, viewer on the page now yeah. says what the show is the next one and then it says will be live in so many hours doesn't it doesn't say live at ten o'clock tomorrow I put the ten o'clock up there actually uh, and I put my, Eastern uh, Time Eastern Time yeah, my thing says video starts automatically when it's live let me let me push on the button and see if anything happens well it's going to well, be on now. Life. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be on now. But when I go off, I then change it I, again, click on it, and it puts a thing in there that there's a countdown. So when people go to this, so all you have to do is bookmark that page and just go to it when it's showtime or even before showtime and let it just sit there. And the minute I click the button here, you start getting the program. It's, it's so much better than uh, when I did uh, Facebook Live, here's what I'd have to do. I'd have to go to Facebook Live. I would then have to go to a page where I put in the name of the show and the date of the show and all of that. And then I would have to cut and paste a key, which I would then have to go over to my, uh, to my encoder here and go into the settings and then go into the, uh, the stream component and put in this key so that key number would be known. If at any time I stopped the show or the show got fucked up, I'd have to go get another key. With this thing, I don't have to do any of that. It has one key. That key's there all the time. All I do is just hit start streaming, and that's it. It's well, that simple. Are you simple. still paying for a live stream? What? Are you still paying for live I stream? I still pay for live stream. I don't know why. They, it's just that they have such a, I have a, a, I'm still trying to see if I can utilize a, um, a, a program they have for switching programs because it's very good. But somehow... Uh, I'm, so that one that you have isn't as good as the. Well, no, uh, but I can't. I can't get it to put. I I can't get it to put this screen on. Okay, oh. I mean I can do it, but I'd have to do it from another machine, and it's it's just too complicated. Um, I, I love it when somebody walks with a computer. It kind of <laughs> has that weird weird look to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Um, uh, so anyway, so it, the whole system is so much simpler for me. And uh, uh, what was it? F Forbin writes, uh, because he's the guy that finally convinced me that I should go over to YouTube and try to use it. So I, I was wondering, he says, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me just, I have to widen the page. Otherwise I can't read it. Uh, I was wondering why anyone would go live on Facebook. Never understood your choice to be there. To me, Facebook is a place relatives and old ladies look for grandkids pictures well that's why this program belongs uh, on facebook, facebook. <laughs> uh, now, Jessica Kinney, uh, uh wrote me he said he wrote you that uh something about uh downloading the podcast the audio to um uh itunes uh but i noticed that uh i get it downloaded to itunes on a thing called podcasts and i saw it there today but he had written you and uh he said in case uh you didn't answer him uh he wanted me to ask you what's the question uh, again uh does the uh does the uh audio podcast still download to itunes yes yeah that's um, every, I, well i saw it today there are two so, things i do every night when i'm through here I take my show and all the other shows, and I put them on the uh, on uh, iTunes. Basically, is what I do, and um, 
That's pretty simple. It's on all the all the uh, platforms that have, have podcasts. This it's is what he wrote. All- yeah, and then and then I then I also put the video on each of the platforms like Facebook and uh, YouTube. I make another copy of it that says recorded, because what it does is it takes a, a, away all the beginning crap, you know, all the, com- the promos and everything like that. And then I also put it on live stream, and I also put it on uh, uh, Vimeo. This is what he wrote. He says, when I went to download last night's show from iTunes, I noticed it was in video format. I was just wondering if that is how you're going to no, no, forward. No, 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 no. There are iTunes. two. There are two different Ramble presentations on iTunes. One is oh, called okay. the Ramble Video, and the other mm-hmm. is called the Ramble. And the Ramble is audio only, and Ramble Video uh, it, version is obviously video. Yeah, is obviously video. Yeah. Okay. Well, he'll be listening to the show tomorrow. And the, so and the difference is they both have the same. They both have the same icon. They both have the same picture. But one says uh, Ramble uh, TV, and the other mm-hmm. one doesn't. Okay. On so now, now he'll have his answer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are two versions of the Ramble, and uh, you know, most people, uh, believe it or not, are liking to watch this thing rather than hear it. You know, if they can if they can see it right now, I, I find that we're getting less people listening to the stream than we are watching the video. It could be that we'll get so low that eventually I won't even put the stream out there. My yeah. stream. No, I'll tell you, Alex, you, YouTube is so convenient. I mean, that's how I watch it. I just open it and I, I subscribe to you. and It's the first thing right there on my screen. Um, yeah. My pro- it says live now. Yeah. And, and when I go off, it, it doesn't do anything. And then a couple of minutes later, while it's been off for a little while, I can't do it till it's been off for about 10 minutes, I then plug in the, the next day, and then the clock will start going again. And I change the title on there to the day that it's on. Yeah, All I'm saying is it's more convenient. It looks better. It's rock solid. You know, you can't ask for more than that. Uh, and and Facebook was just so full of glitches and so full of problems that it wasn't even it was wasn't even getting to be worth it. Scott, are you awake? It's, He's bored. It's, uh, uh, I'm getting bored with all this talk. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's talk about something else. Uh, how about when you used to use Periscope? No, no. no. <laughs> how, about my, how about MySpace? MySpace, yeah, I'm waiting for that MySpace thing to come back because I really like that. That no, nothing like yeah. sparkly cartoon kittens. Scott, do you use Facebook at all? No. No. Okay. Do you have an account? No. No. Okay. I just, I just wondering. Uh, you know, and all those others don't seem to. They don't seem to get the traction. Like I'm on Tumblr. But so what? Who goes over to Tumblr? Phil's on Grinder. Phil's yeah. on Grinder. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I went to Tumblr, my neck would need another adjustment. You know, but what, <laughs> what, what, yeah. yeah. Did any uh, any of you guys? Well, of course, Scott wouldn't. Jeff wouldn't. Ray wouldn't. But uh, uh, Phil, did you ever use an online uh, uh, dating service? Yes. Uh, when I first got divorced. I used uh, J Date and Match, yeah, and uh, then and there was also a scuba diving one, uh, which was interesting. What was, get... what was that site called? Going down on you? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't I don't exactly remember, but it was to you know to meet people the opposite sex that might want to go scuba. That diving. That might want to have sex with a guy in a rubber suit. Yeah. Yeah, right. really. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I I, I was uh, I did okay with uh, both of those services. Um, but in the beginning, you know, uh, people were really, some people were really strange. Uh, I had a couple of women say, oh, I don't date anyone that doesn't have hair. You know, uh, and, as if hair was a, uh, you know, so they, it was very superficial. And, uh, oh, yes, yeah, Scott. <laughs> you have hair. I see hair. You got hair, but you got a face to protect it. Hey, uh, <laughs> Is Scott so- playing a drinking game? Uh, yes. So I, I got to drink every time Phil says something. Yeah, I, I got hair, uh, uh, you know, uh, probably in response to some of those negative things that 
people had said on Facebook. Uh, and, you know, then after I got hair, the people I met, it didn't matter. Yeah. Well, I met uh, I met a girlfriend on, uh, on J-Day. Yeah. But they pay us money I, not to mention that. I met more <laughs> Gentiles on J-Date than I did Jewish women. Really? Yeah. Well, I, I met a couple of, oddly enough, I met a couple of nice women online, uh, none of which I were really was really interested in. And I met girlfriend, and I didn't even think we would have anything really going, except we enjoyed going to movies together. And then after a while, it just one thing led to another, and she was sleeping at my place more than she was sleeping at hers. That's pretty much how it, how it happened, you know? Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, so I, I have to admit that, you know, I, I used a dating service, but don't most people use dating services today? I mean, yeah. Uh, it, How old do you meet people? Well, he, you, know, uh, well no, I, you know, where you, you know, where you meet most people is at work. And, and yeah, that's, that's, and today you yeah. don't want to do that. No, you, you get know? sued, you get arrested. Who knows what you get? You don't want to date anybody at work. So what's the safest way to date? It's probably an online dating service. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and meeting people at a bar, you know, what are you doing? You're meeting uh, other people that, you know, are, are drunk and, and don't even know, that, you know, don't can't make a reasonable decision that they want to go out with you. Well, and, yeah. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think I think that. Uh, 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 you know, the, the, the whole thing about uh, dating online is going to become, I would invest in one of those businesses because I think what was, what's going on now to even take a chance of going out with somebody from work, you know, is, is I think. There's other problems. There's other problems with the online ones. There are people that get mugged. There are people that get raped. There are people that get robbed. It's not as bad as having your whole career ruined by some nutcase who says that you treated her badly. Well, it, you know. they, if she knows that you're a celebrity, she could do that, too. Uh, look, Rose McGowan, uh, I think it's Rose McGowan, yeah. her manager committed suicide. Uh, uh, 50 years old, and she wasn't bad looking either. Uh, I guess was depressed over this Weinstein thing and uh, and just recently committed suicide. Well, wait, 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 why would she commit suicide? Rose McGowan, oh, wait a no, Rose uh, yeah, Ma Rose McGowan is, is one of the major women who has complained about Weinstein. Wein and yeah, I think right. it was because she did uh, she did a, a, a Weinstein film. I think she only did one that I know of. And she what she did was that double feature thing that Tarantino did with uh, Robert Rodriguez uh, yeah. called uh, Oh I can't Bill? huh No, remember there were two movies in the show in the movie. Yeah, it, I remember. It was that. like a double yeah. feature. It was in a car or something. Uh, one, the one with around. Tarantino was in a car, and the other one was a space thing. That was the one I think. I think Rose McGowan was in both both of them actually. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the one time she worked for Weinstein, and that could have been when whatever Weinstein did, he did. But he, you know, the one that I don't get was, um, uh, oh, what's her name? Uh, I'm trying to remember the latest one that's given him a bad time. And, oh, oh uh, yeah, the Kill Bill no, no, the, from Thurman? Kill Bill. Yeah, Uma what's her Thurman. Name? Uma Thurman gave him a bad time, but she, he did it to her, and he supposedly raped her or whatever he did years before Kill Bill, right? Yes. Yeah. So he rapes her. I, if somebody raped me, I would never go anywhere within twenty miles of this guy again, right? She yeah. goes back and makes two movies for Weinstein. So I want to know what she's so fucking mad about, you know, that she could turn around and do that. I mean, uh, I don't care how much you want a career, and I don't care how powerful a man is in Hollywood. Somebody rapes me. I'm not working for that asshole ever again. Well, it was, then, school, she, then she dated Tarantino, and, she, and Tarantino no, tried to kill he, her. He, he, Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, car, oh, no, he, car, he, that, he, that he not, number one, I don't think Tar driving and all that Tarantino, stuff. I don't think, dated her. Uh, who Tarantino no, did date. She said that uh, he got Weinstein to back off because they were kind of dating at one time. Well, no, you're thinking of Sorvino, Mira Sorvino. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was Uma Thurman's story. Oh, no, uh, now, now right, Uma Thurman right. almost got killed doing a car stunt. But Tarantino claims that he would have never let her do that. He should have been more insistent. 
But I think well, they he, told his stunt, his stunt uh, uh, executive producer not to show up at work that day. No, but he also did the stunt before she did it to make sure it was safe. The really? different direction, though. Huh? Yeah. He drove the other direction on the highway, not the same direction. Well, anyway, the point, the point is, yeah, the point anyway. is that where Tarantino probably could be called to account is uh, with um, um, Mira Sorvino, yeah. who he was dating yeah. for a long time. That was his girlfriend, right? And right. Weinstein does his thing with her. And he doesn't complain because Weinstein's his bread and butter. That, that, and and that's what he should be ashamed about. Although you could say that Weinstein again was abusing his power by making it so that you know the Tarantino wasn't going to do anything about it. Um, I can't remember if he knew about it because she told him, or when she told him, he didn't believe it. But. Anybody that was within the orbit of Weinstein knew this guy's reputation. Hell, I bet Ray Renati, who's an actor, probably heard about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Bill Cosby and all of them. Yeah. Spacey surprised me. Although I knew people who knew Kevin Spacey, and uh, he had a drinking problem, and uh, he would get really wild, like if he was here in the city. I knew he was gay. He'd hang out at the Castro, and he'd just kind of lose all control. I think I think it's alcohol is his problem. Is more his problem than, than being. And then he loses it. He loses all control when he's when he has any booze. Well, supposedly and booze this, this Anthony Rapp, the story he told was that he was a kid at the time. He was like seventeen or something. He was working in a Broadway show, and he wound up at this party that that uh, that he was fourteen. That, maybe maybe that. Yeah, he was fourteen. That uh, that Spacey was having. And he went into, he found it boring, so he went into the bedroom, watched television, and Spacey came in and was drunk out of his fucking mind. He even says he was drunk out of his mind yeah. and jumps on top of the kid. And the kid yeah. just kind of pushes him off, gets up, and walks out. Well, yeah. now, how many years later, he, that's being observed as being child rape? You know, and it was all, all it was is exactly it, what you said about him gets justified in what you what you had said about him being a notorious drunk the guy probably gets drunk doesn't know what the fuck he's doing and yeah. has no inhibitions about what he does and probably didn't know right. this kid was 14 he probably just thought it was another human body i think he's he in not, rehab he right have, now in, in arizona yeah as i'm pretty he sure probably he probably didn't remember it either afterwards yeah no, no I don't think he did. in fact he said he didn't remember it you know so i mean they, they, yeah they well, did find the tape of tarantino Kind of supporting uh, Polanski. That's the oh, surface. Oh, with, with uh, who was that uh, disc jockey? The shock Howard Stern. I guess he I was on so, yeah. Stern show in 2003. And you know, it was okay. It was consensual. She was dating him. Oh, this is uh, uh, the uh, thirteen-year-old. Well, thirteen-year-old. Yeah. Listen, she she even she's an old lady now. She says no, but she, she says it wasn't. Uh, no, but she said that, you know, she's asked every judge that's come along, please forgive him and let him come back. She doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't feel that she was hurt that irrevocably that, that he should have to suffer any longer by it. And secondly, the only reason Polanski ran from the country is because they welched on their deal with him. And he was afraid they were, if he, if he went and spent the so-called couple of weeks in jail or whatever that he would never get out of there and that's why he got out of the country they find a reason to keep him well they yeah they never they started welching on all on the deal and that's why he why he fled the country and he and it was right of him to do that because it, you know i had my friend old friend abby hoffman who ran out of the country when they busted him for selling coke supposedly and uh when i finally was with him in hiding about five or six years later. I said, why did you run? And he said, because I knew I'd be in jail for the rest of my life. If, and if I waited, if I waited and time passed, it wouldn't, they, the passion wouldn't be there to find me as guilty. And he was right, because when he came back, they gave him a year in prison, and that was in, a year in jail, and that was it. Didn't yeah. Eldridge Cleaver do the same thing when he yes, went to Cuba? Yes, exactly. He didn't go to Cuba. He went to Africa. Oh. He went to Africa. I know because I talked to him there. 
on the phone with an interview. Uh, he, he and then Tim Leary went and joined Eldridge Cleaver. It was in, uh, oh boy, where's it? Li <laughs> no, it was Liberia or someplace like that. Yeah. So, you know. Um, was he making those jeans with the zipper up the back? And that Cuba? was later on. That was later on. He came back and <laughs> thought he was going to become Calvin Klein. Um, but um, speaking of photographs, you talk about photographs, right? Yeah. Um, I had a photograph I took of this radical couple that I know. And uh, there was then a picture, an interview being done with Eldridge Cleaver in, I can't, I'm trying to remember, Algeria maybe? That's where he was? Or, yeah. yeah, I think it was Algeria. And uh, they were doing an interview with him in hiding, or not in hiding, everybody knew where he was. And in back of him was the picture I took. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so, you know, but I mean, um, sometimes if you, if you go away for a period of time and then come back, you won't get the same kind of sentence you would have gotten when the, the case was kind of passionate at the time. And Abby yeah. came back and he, uh, he got a year, uh, and I don't know if he even spent a year of that in jail and then everything was, everything was forgiven. Did, how did Abby Hoffman die? Did he get hit by a car? Suicide. He got committed suicide. suicide. Uh, Jerry Rubin got hit by a car. Oh, okay, yeah. On Wilshire Boulevard in L.A. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, Abby committed suicide. Uh, I didn't know that Abby was had had uh, was bi bipolar, yeah. and he had to take drugs for it. And he just got sick and tired of taking the drugs because he felt it sapped him of his abilities and of his his creativity. And so he stopped taking it, and next thing you know, he took a, put a gun to his head and killed himself, you know. Uh, and I that, that was one of the deaths that really got to me because yeah. I loved Abby dearly. Uh, Abby was one of the funniest, most intelligent, creative people I've ever known, you know. Uh, well, that's the way you should describe me. Oh, when you go, <laughs> no telling what I'm going to say about you. <laughs> but you're probably going to have to talk at my funeral, not me at yours. Uh, I hope. Okay. Uh, you know. I, I doubt it. Yeah. Well, and the we'll only the only reason Jeff hangs around me is because I'm I'm older than he is, and he feels young. <laughs> you know. Young at heart. And uh, and if I died tomorrow, Scott, would you come out for the funeral? No. Sure. Actually, I want to come to your estate sale. Oh, <laughs> and you got land around all your closets. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. You must have how many how many GoPros you got laying around in there? I only got two GoPros. Go. I've only got two uh, GoPros. Uh, oh. uh, here, I've got this one. You can have. I'll, I'll will this to you when I die. This one. This is oh, the that's deal. the Hero Four. That's the Hero Four. Yeah. I got one right yeah. here. Yeah. I have one, and I've never used it. I got uh, the just, battery always dies so quickly. Well, yeah. well, if you get the newer ones, the batteries last a long time. They last yeah, really good. I, I noticed that too. I, I bought a back for the Hero Four, yeah. so I could that, actually that, see what I was doing. Oh, when you put a back on the Hero Four, like I did here. Wait a minute. Hold on. See, uh, uh, it eats up battery power like you wouldn't believe. I noticed that. <laughs> I noticed that. So, but but the, uh, yeah. You know, I have a special connection, and it fits on my underwater housing for my underwater camera. Yeah. So, yeah. so I can take stills and uh, uh, and uh, movies at the same time. Yeah. So oh, yeah. we're losing people again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're losing hey, people you know, again. Coming, Renati, you're a photographer. Good time to you lose them like because you know what's really stuff. weird. About, I do. What's, I do. Re what's really I weird do about like what's really weird about YouTube is by the end of the show we have more viewers than we have at any other time during the show. Where the uh, other way, huh? Tomorrow, another Phil Free Friday. I Good. got my underwater photography. Good, thank you. Then maybe we, can, maybe we can take this show out of the ditch and put it back on the road where it deserves to be. Right. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much, Phil Meyer, oh, ladies man. and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, Jeff Stein, Connecticut, ladies and gentlemen. Scott Bodiger, Plano, Texas. And Ray Renati, the San Francisco Bay Area somewhere. Anyway. Everybody, wave goodbye so they can, uh, they can, yeah, that's it. There they go. Anyway, that's it. Uh, let me just do a few things here. I have to do, you know, I, 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 I have to do it all, folks. So you got to give me a little, uh, there we go. Okay, we're ready to go. We're ready to close the whole thing off. Hey, listen, 
Uh, next is 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 uh, the intersection with Jack and Amy at one o'clock this morning. Connections will be here at Eastern Time, and tomorrow night, hopefully, if his computer is working, uh, Damien will be here. Uh, just before our program at 9.30 Eastern Time, and then I'm on again tomorrow night at 10, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>